Now at six, the holiday travel rush is on. I'm Angelo Bavaro at Bradley International with a look at how people are faring at the airport. I'm Kaylee Collins with what road safety experts want you to keep in mind if you'll be starting your Thanksgiving celebrations a bit early by heading to the bars later tonight. The city of Hartford is in mourning after a double homicide happened in broad daylight last week. I'm Kay Pattyfoot coming up here why many are calling for the end of violence in Hartford. All local all morning. This is Fox 61 Connecticut's news station. Six o'clock. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. Thanks for starting yours off with us. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you. We hope everything goes smoothly for you over the next couple of days. At least travel wise, looking like today's OK as we get over to meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli, right? Good morning. Yeah, dry roads out there, dry skies too, which will be quite nice for anybody that is traveling by air, by plane or by a car or by train too. Uh, otherwise, though, we are expecting rain to move in for tomorrow, so it does look soggy. There could be some delays on the roadways and maybe even in the skies too. Right now in our satellite and radar, we are quiet. We are scanning the state though and showing that we have cloud coverage out there this morning. Temperatures are starting off in the 20s, 30s and 40s. Depending on where you are, you're at 28 degrees in Torrington, but 43 in the Elm City. So for today, we're starting off with clouds by this afternoon. So the late morning and early afternoon, we'll see decrease in clouds as temperatures move into the upper 40s to the lower 50s. It is going to be a lovely day today with lots of sun. 51 degrees in Danbury, 50 53 in Hartford later on, 50 degrees in Willimantic. Then for our Thursday, for, for Thanksgiving, we are tracking the potential for heavy rain that moves in by the late morning and early afternoon. Then we'll dry out the skies for Friday. So you'll see that increasing chance for rain as we approach 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, becoming widespread by the afternoon, tapering off in the evening. We'll have more details on that coming up in just a bit. 602, the busiest travel day of the year, mm -hmm. Symphony. Are you ready? I, I'm, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> you got this. You know, I'm no Rachel Piscatelli oh, on traffic, but I'll do it. my best. Stop. <laughs> It's already been a busy morning on the roads, Rachel. We have two crashes to let you know about. So if you're just waking up and joining us, here's what you need to know before heading out the door. The first crash happening along I-91 southbound out in the Windsor Locks area. This is between exits uh, 40 and 38, I believe. Speeds down to 17 miles per hour out there, and this is what it looks like near that crash site. So you can see things are pretty much stalled on that southbound side. Plan ahead if you have to head up to Bradley this morning you will likely be stuck in that delay on the roads this morning. Also out in New Britain, uh, there's a bit of a backup along Route 72 westbound where there's a one vehicle crash heading on to I-84. This is what it looks like out there. You can see they have those uh, flare things up to kind of block off that lane and let people know that there's a crash out there. Drive safely as you head out the door. We have your next update coming up in about 15 minutes. Hi, right, Symphony. Thank you. Well, like she said, the travel rush for Thanksgiving is already on. Hundreds of thousands of people in Connecticut are expected to travel in some form for the holiday, and a lot of them are heading out early. Yeah, so we're checking in with Fox News One's Angelo Bavaro. He's joining us live at Bradley International Airport there in Windsor Locks. Looks like crowds certainly gathering mm -hmm. there. How's it looking? Erica, Tim, good morning. Yeah, things definitely busy as expected, but if you were with us in the last hour, five o'clock, things were a mess then. We saw lines wrapping around the entire terminal around here. Lots of headaches, lots of stress. Things have calmed down. That is the good news if you're heading this way at this hour. So this is a look at the security line. Definitely busy, definitely packed. You can see that line extending outside of that roped area and into the terminal. But last hour, if you were with us, you saw that line extend all the way back towards the back wall and then wrap around by the Duncan here on the left. So it was crazy. Things have definitely calmed down and things do seem to be moving smoothly through this line. Now, Bradley's peak hours are typically from 4 to 7.30 in the morning. 3 to 5.30 p.m. is another busy time. The Connecticut Airport Authority estimates more than 95,000 passengers will depart from Bradley over the 10 days from November 22nd to December 1st. This year's busiest days for air travel are expected to be the weekends before and after Thanksgiving. Now, people we spoke with say the headaches that come with holiday travel are worth it in the long run once they get to those destinations. It's amazing. I, I mean, I was, I'm here, you know, several hours. I came on the last flight. And um, 
within two hours, it's, it's, it's um, packed. I headed to Florida, Ormond Beach. Actually, my girlfriend wanted to come even earlier to the airport, but yeah, we wanted an early flight so we could spend the whole day, uh, not waste the day down there. I am going to Jamaica. I'm so excited. My sister and I, we um, about, we're almost the elders in our family, and so now since our, our, most of our loved ones are gone, instead of going home and um, enjoying Thanksgiving with them, we created a new tradition. New traditions, Florida, Jamaica, all sounds good to me. Travelers know what they're doing here, but here are some friendly reminders to help you avoid any of those headaches. It's recommended that you arrive inside the main terminal at least 90 minutes before your flight's departure time, maybe earlier than that if you know you're coming at a busier time. Also want to plan ahead when it comes to parking. People who come through Bradley do have access to several nearby lots and the airport's parking garage. You can find information about locations, prices, and availability online. We have seen some of those lots fill up. We have a link to check that availability on fox61.com. Just click on the links page. And if you need to pick somebody up at Bradley, there is a free cell phone waiting lot located along Light Lane, just minutes from the terminal. And with how busy things are expected to be, you will want to wait there until your family or friends are ready to be picked up curbside. Now, some more good news this morning amid the mess of people here and maybe the headaches. Everything does look good on these arrival and departure boards. All these flights running on time, it looks like, except for one here, Denver, was 7.30, now 8.30. 37, but that's really the only issue we're seeing on these boards. That is some good news. Bradley says it is well prepared for the holiday rush this year. We're live in Windsor Locks. I'm Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Angelo, thanks. Well, certainly better day to travel today, at least weather-wise. Yes, so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, some people are going to start Thanksgiving celebrations early tonight, the night before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Eve has become one of the most popular nights of the year to go out and party and some may be partying a little too hard. Yeah, Kaylee Collins joins us live now from West Hartford with more on what roadway safety experts want you to keep in mind lest you be heading to the bar tonight. Kaylee, good morning. Tim, Erica, good morning. Yeah, I'm in Blue Black Square here in West Hartford. Obviously, it's pretty quiet now just after 6 in the morning, but it's likely to be a different story later this evening. This area will be packed with people who want to get their Thanksgiving celebrations going a little bit earlier. And of course, if you plan to participate in this Thanksgiving, safety road or road safety experts are just recommending that you plan ahead to have a safe ride home. Now, this Thanksgiving Eve has garnered a bit of a, rep a reputation at this point as a night where people overindulge and alcohol and with that comes to comes a spike in crashes that often involve drunk drivers. The National Highway Traffic Association says that from 2018 to 2022, 833 people were killed in drunk driving crashes all over the country during Thanksgiving. In 2022, over a third of drivers involved in deadly crashes on Thanksgiving Eve were drunk. Now, the best way to prevent these deadly incidents is to make that plan ahead of time. So you know, if drinking is a part of your fun plans, that's fine. We're just asking you to plan for it ahead of time. You know, take a ride on the Hartford line. We've added extra trains. You can use a ride share, but just make an arrangement with someone so that you know that there's going to be someone who can get you to your destination safely. Now, DOT says there will be increased police patrols and checkpoints all over the state tonight and through the rest of the holiday week. DOT also has signage up along our highways reminding people of the number of roadway deaths that have already occurred this year. That number is up to 299. So, of course, have a plan to get home safe, make those arrangements ahead of time, and never get behind the wheel if you are not sober. Live in West Hartford this morning, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Hey, Kaylee, thank you. A Hartford community came together to mourn the death of a mother and her infant son. It's been a week since 20 year old Josiah Mercado and her little boy, Messiah Diaz, were shot and killed in the middle of the day. Yeah, they were in a car on New Britain Avenue at the time with two other people, one of whom was also hurt. Police said the shooter was in another car. Hartford police and the U.S. Marshals say they found the suspected shooter, Lance Morales, in Puerto Rico. He was taken into custody. He is expected to be extradited back to Connecticut. On police said uh, Morales will face two counts of murder, and of course, he will be facing numerous other charges. 
Oh, this morning, family members and loved ones of Mercado and her baby boy are grieving. Yeah, Fox 61's Kate Pattyfoot shares more on how they were remembered last night at a vigil. A family is in mourning after a double homicide took the life of a young mother and her four month old baby. The family of Josiah Mercado joined with Mothers United Against Violence held a vigil in Tuesday night to mourn and uplift each other. Another family tragically torn apart by gun violence in Hartford. 20 year old Josiah Mercado and her four month old baby were shot and killed last Tuesday. Now her loved ones in the community are coming together during this difficult time, even calling out what's wrong in the city. Keep a spirit in Hartford. And this spirit been running rampant in Hartford for, for years. Those kids don't got no guidance. Right, and that's, that's what right. happens, man. Right. Don't got no guidance. That's, that's, we that's talk what? about it and be about it. Reverend Brown and Mercado's family called on the city of Hartford to do better and to put the guns down so no family has to continue experiencing this kind of pain. In Hartford, Cape Hattiefoot at Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. State educators sounded the alarm once again. The Connecticut Education Association released a new survey that shows 98% of teachers are concerned about stress and burnout. Fox 61's political reporter Emma Wolfhorst spoke with CEA leaders as well as state lawmakers and local teachers. She's got more from the state capitol. State education leaders say teachers are exhausted and they're now calling on state lawmakers and the community to step up. The survey shows 98% of teachers are concerned about frustration and burnout. The top issues contributing to that burnout include insufficient pay, challenges with student behavior, and a lack of respect. The survey shows the number of educators likely to retire or leave the profession early has dropped in the past two years from 74 to 62%, but CEA still calls it a major concern. In terms of solutions, state lawmakers say the legislature has made moves to address these challenges, but more needs to be done next session. Legislators want to prioritize alleviating financial burdens for licensure, incentives for recruiting and retaining teachers, and lowering class sizes. But educators say this boils down to funding. We've made a lot of changes. The one thing that those changes haven't been is financial. Data is not destiny. It is information that helps us to drive to the future we want. It should not be ignored, but it's not the end of the story, but a step along the journey. State lawmakers tell me they're already a part of conversations to potentially draft some of these proposals for the upcoming legislative session starting next January. Reporting at the state capitol, Emma Wolfhorst, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.